Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and Turn. I hope that you're doing well. I hope you're having a great week. I finally recovered my voice after a two week cold sinus thing. Um, and I'd like to discuss The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Dame Agatha Christie. It's a very uh, strong novel. It's a very intricately plotted novel. It's very innovative. It's frequently regarded as one of Christie's best novels. It's an early Hercule Poirot novel and it ends up on top, top 10 lists and things like that. And so The Murder of Roger Ackroyd does does make a great place to start with Christie and a great place to start with uh, Hercule Poirot, the great Belgian detective. Um, there are some unique facets to it and I don't want to go into the plot twist because that's part of the joy of an Agatha Christie novel. Uh, one of the other strengths is that you can read them in about three hours if you just give in to the plot and want to unravel the mystery along with the characters uh, within the book. And so uh, Murder of Roger Ackroyd, great place to start with Christie. Um, briefly, Perot has retired, he's in the English countryside, he's at this in this village and there's a death in the village and then uh, Roger Ackroyd, the titular character, he's murdered. What's going on? Um, and Perot has been incognito but he's brought in by Ackroyd's niece to hopefully identify the, the tr find the truth and identify the murder. In part because it's believed that Ackroyd's stepson is the, is the murderer, he's missing. That's, that's never good. Um, and so what transpires, of course, we have Pro doing his investigation. Uh, he's interviewing the eight people, any one of whom could have committed the murder, any one of whom might have had the motive commit to commit the murder. And then he slowly starts to check people off or we slowly start to have those, you know, circumstances that seem to condemn a character explained in a fairly rational, uh, if, you know, perhaps passionate manner. Um, one of the one of the aspects about the book that is unique, um, not individually unique but but is uh, less common with the Perot novels is that this one is in the first person. Uh, many of the Perot novels that we think of, Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, many many others have um, a th sort of third person narrative. The, the investigation is going on, we get to meet certain characters, we're with Perot, we, we kind of see it all unfolding. Here we're, uh, we are in the uh, mind and, and in the sort of notes of Dr. Shepard, a local doctor who uh, was friends with pretty much everybody who was there on, uh, brought in when Ackroyd's been stabbed and who is next door's neighbors with uh, Hercule Poirot. And so Poirot at one point even comments like, oh, it'd be nice if somebody was writing, writing down, you know, my investigation. Well, actually, and let me allow you to read it. Uh, and so we're in this first person narrative, which gives a unique flavor. And, and it's something that Christie enjoys playing with. Uh, there are comments, of course, on Sherlock Holmes <laughs> and the way that uh, Watson writes the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and the mysteries. Uh, and that that's how Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was projecting the mystery. And so Christie's commenting on that. And that is one of the more innovative aspects. And one of the interesting aspects is how she was clearly such a reader of detective fiction and crime fiction as a creator. And that, that's a really interesting aspect and an interesting window. There's of course a wonderful twist. We're presented with characters, uh, some of whom are comical. Um, I do think the the characterization is not the strongest part of the novel. It's a fascinating little plot. It's a fascinating murder to unravel. And once you've finished the book, it's one that you almost want to go back and reread and see where are the pieces, where are the clues that Christie has laid out for you because that that's such a joy um, within her books. Um, but the, the characterization and, and the ways in which each character feels distinct and unique and seems to breathe a little bit within the plot. Yes, they're all within this labyrinth, but they, they can breathe and exist within that labyrinth. And I think she she's a little bit stronger with that in books like And Then There Were None, in a couple of the other Poirot stories, um, and in some of her other books. One of the other really fun aspects to uh, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd is the character of Carolyn Shepard, the sort of spinster conspiracy theorist uh, sister of Dr. Shepard, our narrator, our first person narrator. And we get his uh, comments on his sister and his thoughts on her. Uh, but one of the things that occurred was when the when the book was adapted, they changed the age of Carolyn Shepard and made her like a, a child who was enthralled by mysteries and gossip, not an older woman. And so Christie wanted a character like that. And of course, we ended up with the great Miss Marple. And so there, there's a proto Miss Marple within the within the book and you almost have this Miss Marple, Hercule Poirot mashup occurring before the Marple characters have ever been created. So that's one of the real joy, other joys of the book is uh, it, it, it's connections to other Christie works. So I highly recommend reading this. Um, again, I'm not gonna share the twist, but if you know, you know, and it's a good one. It's, it's very effective. Uh, there are 
course, many, many Poirot novels. I have a couple of these omnibus editions that I really enjoy. And there are aspects of, I had mentioned, of course, the influence of Conan Doyle's, <coughs> excuse me, Sherlock Holmes, uh, particularly on this story, particularly on this sense of like having the, um, the I narrative, the first person narrative of someone who's getting aspects and making judgments that get revealed to not be correct and not always in the most polite terms, but th th that's an effective way uh, to read the mystery. Um, I think, of course, that some of some of the strengths that Christie presents in, in to a greater extent in some of her other novels remind me a little bit of Jane Austen and the ways she creates these almost whimsical characters or characters who are who are archetypes, but then have a little bit of flair to them, a little bit of flavor to them, and and that's always enjoyable. Uh, of course, it's hard to discuss Poirot without discussing the great Magret uh, creation of George Simenon and the many many mysteries he gets involved in. And in terms of the way that The Murder of Roger Ackroyd is an innovative detective novel, the way that Christie uses certain tropes or uses ideas and, uh, and really allows that to, to um, enhance and amplify the twists and, and her plotting. Uh, I'm reminded of The Great In a Lonely Place by Dorothy Hughes. Just a fantastic book, fantastic noir novel, uh, but one that really turns a lot of noir conventions on its head despite being an early noir novel to a certain extent. So um, I don't know if you have a favorite Christie character or favorite Christie novel. I always really enjoy reading her books. I have for over 20 years now. So again, I hope everybody's doing well. Have a great week. Thanks.